We shall be talking about two more necrosis factor alpha inhibitor drugs in this lecture. The drugs we shall be studying are Eternocept, Infliximab, Adalimumab, Sertolizumab, Golimumab. So before we begin, let's understand exactly what tumor necrosis factor alpha is and why it's important. Well, the summary of it is basically it's involved in inflammation. However, tumor necrosis factor alpha is actually a cytokine central to many aspects of inflammatory response. Macrophages, mast cells, and activated T helper cells secrete tumor necrosis factor alpha. Tumor necrosis factor alpha stimulates macrophages to produce cytotoxic metabolites, thereby increasing phagocytic killing activity. So here, you can see a stimulus activated monocytos or macrophage, and then it produces tumor necrosis factor alpha. However, it has a lot of effects on different parts of the body. First of all, it has effects on osteoclasts in the bone, which lead to aberrant activation of osteoclast formation. Well, you remember, osteoclast activity causes breakdown of bone. If this happens in the joint, it's going to cause you to have increased bone resorption, joint space narrowing, causing a lot of inflammation. Also, it affects adipocytes, which interfere with the metabolism. Also affects monocytes, which increases their differentiation and also causes endothelial cells to increase cell infiltration and increase angiogenesis, which is formation of new blood vessels. It also has effects on myocytes, which is in the cardiac muscles, which leads to myocardial dysfunction, cardiac myocyte death. It also has effects on glial cells, which causes modification of synaptic transmission and also effects on fibroblasts, which leads to apoptosis. Now, when it binds to hepatocytes, it leads to increased acute phase response, which leads to increased inflammation. That causes increased formation of C-reactive protein, which you know is a marker of inflammation in the body. This can be detected in the bloodstream in the serum where you can test for a patient that has increased inflammation from any inflammatory conditions, and you check for CRP levels, and that's because of the effects of this tumor necrosis factor alpha. It also binds to B cells, which leads to formation of antibodies, and T cells, which cause more T cell proliferation, which can eventually lead to inflammation. So as you can see here, it has a lot of effects, but you also need to understand that it causes cachexia in malignancy. So patients often complain of having losing weight, right? A patient has a small cell carcinoma of the lung or has a renal cell carcinoma often cause complaints of weight loss. Well, the reason why they're losing weight is because they have this tumor necrosis factor, right? Because the necrosis, which is death. And because it's involved in that, uh, in cancer cells, this patient eventually develops cachexia and they start losing weight. Remember in tuberculosis, the ability of the granuloma to stay stable is because of the effect of tumor necrosis factor alpha. So that's how macrophages are able to entrap the mycobacterium tuberculosis organism and form a granuloma inside the lung. So it's very, very important. Now, in sepsis, interleukin-1, interleukin-6, and tumor necrosis factor alpha also can mediate sepsis. Now that we've seen the effects of tumor necrosis factor alpha, now we can further understand how drugs such as Eternocept work. Well, what is Eternocept? Well, Eternocept is actually a, is produced by a recombinant DNA. Now, let's study Eternocept in a little more detail. Here, first, you have to realize on the cell membrane, we have the tumor necrosis factor receptor, which is the P55 kilodalton, right here. Now, that has to bind to tumor necrosis factor alpha. Now, also, we have the second receptor for tumor necrosis factor alpha, which is the tumor necrosis factor receptor 2, which is a P75 because it's a 75 kilodalton protein. Now, when tumor necrosis factor alpha actually binds to its receptors, it has pro-inflammatory cytokines and basically initiates the pathologic uh, causes that we had talked about earlier, which like increased inflammation, activation of uh, proliferation of B cells or T cells, B cells making antibodies, just like we talked about earlier, or even effects on the liver, for example, increased formation of C-reactive protein, which is a marker of inflammation. So now, etanocept, on the other hand, was discovered and it was created by actually having identical 
uh, receptors of the domain of the human P75 TNF receptor. So what they did is they took this TNF receptor itself, created an identical copy, and then combined it to the IgG G1 FC portion of the human antibody. See right there. So now we have like a partial antibody binding to this receptor, and that's what Eternacept is. And you see, this is the FC region of the human IgG1 antibody. So using that, that's why it's called, it's called, it's produced by recombinant DNA. Now, the important thing is that now Eternacept can actually bind to tumor necrosis factor alpha. That is how it works. That's its mechanism of action, see? So once it binds, well, tumor necrosis factor can no longer bind to its receptor on the cells, which means there's no more signal transduction. You can have that massive inflammatory response patients get, and there's no effects on osteoclastic activity or chondrocytes. There's no inflammation in the joints, and patients actually feel better. So what do we use etanacept for? Well, it's used to treat patients that have inflammatory conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, and ankylosing spondylitis, right? Remember, these are all inflammatory conditions. Patients that have rheumatoid arthritis or will have joint pain, right? Because they're constantly having massive inflammation. Also, uh, patients that have ankylosing spondylitis are always having back pain, right? So in psoriasis, they usually develop a rash, but they can also develop a psoriatic arthritis, right? So you can see itis, 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 also all about inflammation about this condition. So how do you remember this for the board exam? Well, just spell out etanacept and look at the T and the capital N, intercepts TNF. So etanacept, the TN, intercepts tumor necrosis factor, alpha. Now let's take a look at monoclonal antibodies. Well, as you can look at the word, mono means one, clonal means basically a cloning single antibodies, right? So these are basically antibodies. So we've got infliximab, adalimumab, sertolizumab, and gulimumab. Well, their mechanism is actually pretty straightforward. Right? They are, whenever you, see, whenever you see the word MAB, right? MAB basically stands for monoclonal antibody. So on the board exam, once you see MAB, you know we're talking about monoclonal antibody. So it's pretty straightforward. Well, what they do is they are anti-tumor necrosis factor alpha monoclonal antibodies. So here, side by side, you can see this is infliximab, right? It's a chimeric antibody, right? And it's a little bit different from etanacept, right? So if you look here, we have the heavy chain and the light chain of the human antibody, right? That's the constant regions of the human antibody, right? And they bind here, they will bind to tumor necrosis factor alpha, and basically negate the effects on the cell membrane so they don't bind again to the tumor necrosis factor alpha receptors. Now, if you look at infliximab, adalimumab, and golimumab, they are all monoclonal antibody. However, sertolizumab is a pegol, which is a pegylated FAB fragment. Okay, it still works by binding to tumor necrosis factor alpha. If you co compare that to etanacept, which we talked about earlier, which is a soluble receptor, see, it has basically that tumor necrosis factor receptor here, which is used to form the first portion of it, and it's not combined with the FC fragment of the human IgG1 antibody segment, okay? That's what makes it separated from all this monoclonal antibody. Now, it's used to treat the pear disease. That's what I call them. So pear, which is psoriasis, ankylosing spondylitis, inflammatory bowel disease, such as Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis or rheumatoid arthritis. These are all have the same pathology, right? It's all about inflammation. So if you can decrease inflammation in the patient's body, they have less pain and they feel better. This is why we treat patients with monoclonal antibodies. So on the board exam, remember PAIR, that's the mnemonic to be able to, for diseases that we treat this monoclonal antibodies. So you're probably thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, how am I gonna be able to remember all this monoclonal antibodies? Well, we've got a beautiful mnemonic for you here. So the way you remember is ADAL got certified by inflicting pain on TNF. Wow, that is easy, right? So what you have to look at is ignore the last couple, oh, re remember it's basically a map, right? They all have map in them. So it's very easy to remember, remember that part. It's now try to keep track of which one of them when you've been tested on the USMLE or the complex of which I'm supposed to pick, right? 
so I can know which one is being used. Well, Adal is the name of the guy. In order for him to get certified, he's got to be able to win the championship, right? He's got to win the match. Well, the match is the, the battle between patients that have pain, right? All these patients have pain. Rheumatoid arthritis, complaint of pain, right? Knee pain, joint pain, back pain. Ankylosing spondylitis, right? Inflammatory bodies, they have abdominal pain, right? They have blood in their stool, depending if they have ulcerative colitis, right? Because they have an ulceration, ulceration in their bowel leads to severe amount of pain. Now, so Adal is the main guy. He's our guy who's got to, in order for him to get certified, he's got to inflict pain on TNF. Once we inflict pain on TNF, we give him a chemical knockout, we we'll punch him in the face, and now the patient feels better, right? So now that's how we get certified. So adalimumab, gulimumab, sertolizumab, and infliximab, right? That is how you remember this for the board exam, okay? So if you really enjoyed this lecture, we'd like you to click below on the icon to subscribe to our channel. And also, we'd like you to visit smashusmla.com to be able to watch over 300 hours of USMLE and comics review lecture videos such as this to be able to do well on your board exam. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.